guys, it's me. I'm back. What's up, party people? We're like, man, it's come on. This is this this show is taking a turn for the. Oh. <laughs> What's going on, everyone? Welcome to another episode of Monster Bass Live. We got a great show for you today. You know, I got I got Rafi, Chris, and the guys, and uh, actually, it's just Rafi, Chris, and Fix. But uh, we got a really special guest today. We got Ben Nowak coming on the show. He's talking about breaking down lakes with us, and uh, it's gonna be great to talk to him again. He has been on the show for a while. But before we do that, as always, we love to celebrate your catches, and we love to celebrate PBs because that's what we do. You know, we're here to help you become a better fisherman, help you catch more fish, and uh, we've got some PBs to celebrate right now. So if we could uh, get it up on the screen, I'd like to uh, give a big shout out to Les Johnson with a 10 pound, four ounce uh, on a big glide bait with his pink shorts. You know, I think the pink shorts definitely helped him. It was morning dawn, and uh, I'm pretty sure that's what he was catching it on. Uh, the next one is Kai McRae. Eight pounds, three ounces on a swim bait. I feel like I've seen this kid before. Same picture, different kid. I really do. Maybe he's got a twin brother, but I don't know. Anyway, congratulations. Ronnie Taylor. Oh, my God. 13 pounds, four ounces on a shaky head. Look at the size of that thing. I don't know what I would do if that. If, if I stuck that thing... I'd probably get so excited. I'd throw the rod into the water just because I'd want to make sure I got it up there and I'd lose it. All right, let's get back to normal. David Yaskis, five pounds, eight ounces. Beast on a wacky rig. It's not spelled properly, but who am I? And then Justin Terry, formerly of the Atlanta Hawks, uh, six pounds, seven ounces on a drop shot. All right, good stuff, guys. You know, listen, at the end of the day, I'd love to feature all of you guys, and all you need to do is go to the trophy room, monsterbass.com slash PB, upload your pick or, you know, some a pick that you're proud of or your PB, whatever it is. I want to see it. We want to celebrate it. And if you do and we use it, we'll send you a little something in the mail. So uh, keep your picks coming. We love to see them, and thank you guys so much for sending them in. Um, let's get the guys in here. I'm really excited about today's show. What's going on? Yeah. Oh, you're it's bringing in Ben, too. How about that? All the guys. All right. Yeah. We got well, surprise. Ben. Yeah, surprise. Yeah. Ben, Ben's in the house. I just want to start 10 pounds in pink shorts. I don't have a 10-pound fish, and I don't have pink shorts, so yeah, got to make a change. I think I'm going to go shopping. Yeah, I need a 10-pounder, double digit, and I'm telling you, that's pretty good. You know, 10 pounds in pink shorts is my only fans. <laughs> uh, I, I, just kind of was, I was setting you up for magic right oh there, you so crushed it for good. me thank you yeah. you're welcome i oh, love that that's my job. i love that all right so ben how you doing man good wow. man how are you i'm glad to be back on here yeah yeah how's the family they're good we're gonna hear them in the background i'm sure at some point they're gonna like start yelling at each other but that's just part of the uh part of the lifestyle now so. yeah yeah a little tag team action you know you you know, you might have to run out. Mom has to come in and she can start talking about drop shotting while yeah. you're taking care of the kids. It's fine. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. We've She'll all tell you there. that she's a better fisherman than me. So that's, that's totally fine. And you would agree, wouldn't you? Yeah. Oh yeah. Smart she catches fish just sitting down. Oh yeah. She's great. It's amazing. Amazing. All right. So we're, uh, you know, it's funny because you haven't been on the show in a while and, uh, I saw something online and, and, and so I, it led me to dig a little bit deeper. And, you know, I know you as, is, you know, one of the best smallmouth anglers on the planet. Like if I got to have my, my, my Mount Rushmore, I'm putting you up there, whether you like it or not. It may be, it may be too kind, but I like catching yeah. smallmouth. So. You do yeah. like catching smallmouth. And uh, I saw that you were offering a service for breaking down yeah. a lake. And it, and it got me thinking because like I watch people like, Alex Rudd or, or even T-Rex. T-Rex is like, yeah, I might go fish this lake tomorrow. I might go fish that lake. And I often wonder, like, how do you do that and have success, right? Because, you know, what I would do is I would just go hire a guide, right? I'd hire a guide. I'd go out on the water. They know the water best. But these guys are just, you know, have kayak, will travel. 
you know, Chris is the same way. He's got a kayak. He's got a boat. But, like, take us through, like, take us through what, what, what's going on and how you're going to help people break down new lakes. Yeah, the other big thing, like what you said, Rick, is, like, if you're going somewhere new, and let's say you're going for three or four days and you don't want to spend two days trying to figure out a place or, or all three days struggling, like, that's the hardest part is starting – kind of having those starting blocks of where to begin. Mm -hmm. So basically where this all began, I have been focusing a lot on like mental health stuff over the past couple months. And the guy's like, why don't you become a fishing coach? Like instead of a mental coach, why don't you become a fishing coach and like provide virtual guide services? And then it kind of evolved from there. Really my goal is just to help people go out and catch more fish, whether it's on their home body of water, whether they want to learn a technique, whether they're coming to Michigan or go into New York or go into a destination lake and they want to know where to start. My goal really is to take a body of water or take a technique or take whatever they want to learn, break it down in a one hour package, sit down one on one with that person and really go through everything. Be like, Hey, you're coming to St. Clair. This is the water clarity to expect. You know, this is kind of the area you need to be looking. You're coming in May. This is what I'd be throwing. This is kind of what I'd be doing. Like give them everything they need to have success. And what's cool is because it's live one-on-one, -on -one, it's not just a YouTube video. Like I can really cater it to each person depending on what they're looking for, what they're doing. And um, just gives me a different way to connect with an audience that already exists out there that maybe is a little underserved. So that's kind of where the idea came from. And then just started kind of snowballing from there into just, um, you know, being able to find a way to connect with people and offer this service. So can yeah. you, I was going to say, can you be my fish counselor? So it sounds like I can call you. So yeah. when I go somewhere and I'm having a bad day and I'm like, man, I cannot catch fish. I can dial up and FaceTime Ben and be like, just talk yeah. me through this. I'm so mad. I'm in a tournament. I, I mean, that's it's pretty cool understanding technology and using that to help people. And really it's kind of that monster bass slogan. It's like, you know, helping people have a better opportunity to catch a fish in the water, helping you catch your next PB. That's, that's cool that you've taken that to the next level of, to directly connect to people. So I think that's a pretty special thing to be able to do. Well, and two, like that's where I think like yourself and a lot of these guys that fish quite a bit, we have this experience and this understanding on the water. And then it, you almost get to a next level in your fishing career or fishing journey where you want to start helping people and you want to start finding a way where you can like be a mentor to someone. Because I did have one person that sort of taught me the ropes a little bit, but a lot of us don't have that. Right. So, right. Yeah, like you said, set up some time. You know, if you want to learn how to fish a drop shot, literally FaceTime me on a day that you're on the water drop shot fishing. And I'll be like, hey, this is the lake you're on. This is a good area to look. Like, start here and then FaceTime me and we'll walk through sort of everything you need to know from the bait, the rod, yeah. you know, how yeah, to fish. Yeah, going it. back to our last week's show, this is Rick. This is this, this is the merit fishing merit badge. He's right. the merit badge counselor. This is what we we're talking about is this opportunity for youth to go and learn things. And this is why I myself, I'll share, I'm going all the way back to the basics because you and I could sit and talk about fishing and the dialogue and the language and the narrative becomes a foreign language to somebody just starting. And so I just threw out a YouTube video of just a Neko rig. And I'm like, first off, it's Neko, not Nico. It's Japanese. It's the word cat. And this is how you can use it. And people are like, thanks so much for that basic information. It's like, don't go past that. Just use this right now. And, and talking to people on a level that they understand, I think is super important. And for you to be doing that for the next generation, and I say next generation of anglers, they could be 60. They could be 55. They don't have to be an eight-year-old or a 10-year-old starting fishing. We got people across the board. And I know the demographics of Monster Bass, you're talking to folks that want to get better at fishing and to have you as a personal mentor. That's that's an awesome opportunity. So way, way cool on that. I'm excited. Thank you. Yeah. And like you said, sometimes you, you kind of forget things you forget how basic you have to almost go sometimes not as like a knock on anything, but like when I started fishing, I didn't know how to tie a knot. I literally, right. my first bass pole bass pole that I bought for myself was like a shark trolling rod with a 5,000 <laughs> size, like a 5,000 size spinning reel. And I spooled that thing up with like two spools of six pound test line. It was ridiculous. Oh my God. You set the skeleton right out of that thing. <laughs> oh, it was terrible. And uh, I thought it was the best thing at the time, but I bought a spinnerbait and I like tied overhand loop knot first cast. 
that thing was gone. And I will never forget it. We were sitting in this kayak that had a hole in the bottom of it. So we were constantly bailing water. Such a ridiculous trip, but you don't know what you don't know. Yeah. Right. That's cool. Speaking of not knowing what I don't know, like, can you walk me? All right. So if I say, hey, Ben, I'm new to fishing or I've been fishing a lot. And I'm fishing this particular body of water. Let's say like Lake Castaic out out here. Yeah. How how would you know about that lake, and how would you let me know what to do and what to look for if that's a body of water that you're not particularly familiar with or haven't fished? So a lot of it comes down to like research and, and sort of knowing where to start researching. So like, there's a lot of incredible apps out there. Um, whether it's Navionics web app or it's, it's maps on your boat, or um, I'll just throw it out there. I use Omnia a lot and they have some new premium features on their Omnia app where you can like start to understand bottom hardness and where grass is setting up. And then you can start to just kind of take your experience to say, okay, this is a, let's say it's a natural body of water. It's pretty shallow for the most part. You know, sort of the areas that fish are going to set up throughout the year and just having that experience on the water, like you can start to direct people. Now, obviously, I'm going to be much better for northern style anglers or guys that are targeting smallmouth. But like I went down to Dale Hollow, for example, last year, which is in middle Tennessee, northern Tennessee area. Just having some understanding of how lakes and fish move around the body of water. Like the first spot I rolled up on, there were some uh, large mouths setting up on the end of this tapering point. Well, then you can start to understand, OK, like I knew they were going to be there and I can start to pattern it. The way that the, the course will be set up is this is what I'm kind of looking for. If plan A doesn't work, you might want to look for this and give them a couple different options because, yeah, I'm not going to have been to everywhere. But really my goal is to give them um, the starting blocks that they need to kind of have the confidence and success to get on that water and succeed. That, so that actually makes, like, Yeah, it makes a ton of sense. So you would you would do all the research basically and then apply your knowledge and say – this particular body of water, you could expect this season, these temperatures, this type of clarity, this yeah. type of bottom, this depth, and this type of structure. And I would use X, Y, and Z and target these particular areas with these specific okay. types of baits or rigs or setups. It's pretty cool. Yep. I like that. Yeah. So it's just a really cool way to kind of, um, for me too, look at different bodies of water and really kind of reinforce the things that I've, I've learned over the years and, I'm not traveling as much, but there's been a time, especially with Monster Bass, that I was traveling a decent bit around the country and learning different things and reconnecting with people maybe that I, I haven't gotten the chance or lakes or areas I haven't gotten the chance to talk about in a while. Would you be able to help fishing with Gramps catch uh, his second fish on a frog? Oh, yeah, no doubt. <laughs> nice. Yeah, fish, fishing with Gramps says he doesn't care how we stay Neko rig. It doesn't matter. I'm like, come on, have some respect for where these things came wow. from. No, I was going to tell you – Ben, I mentioned in the green room when we were chatting, I saw some of your posts and I wanted to share that I think we're related. At one post, you were out in all your striker rain gear, head to ankle only because you had flip flops on. And I was like, yes. this dude, we're yes. like, we're homies. And then there was a post, it had a tube, it had a blade bait, and it had a little small swim bait on a ball jig. And I'm like, we're homies again. Like, I could fish with yeah. this guy. And, and that's that thing with Rafi when, when Ben thinks of Folsom Lake in Northern California, it's a, it's a hard fishery, but if he did his research, those three baits, what he knows about fish, rocky bottom, it's this man-made reservoir, the water levels are changing, clear water, he's got baits that work and knowing the fish language and knowing fish, it's this cool thing is fish definitely are different regionally. And that's the cool part about monster bass is you have these regional baits, but overall fish behavior is very similar. And so there's traits that happen. Fish are doing a certain thing in the south earlier than they do that in the north just because the weather patterns are different and they're changing at different times of the year. But fish, bass, largemouth, smallmouth spots, they all have their differences, but there's a lot that crosses a, you know across the line that's the same. So I think that's cool that you asked that question, Rafi. How does Ben approach a different lake? Go online, Castiac. They have a line of baits that are in the Monster Bass box that are, it's the brand of the lake name. Of course, there was a cool time where there were trout planted by the state of California and bass got ridiculously huge. And that, that lake is highly pressured. So just that information that Ben could get really quickly, he could direct an angler with all of his wisdom and the, the experience to give him a really good head start to find some fish. So that's pretty awesome. 
I love that. Yeah. <clears throat> ben, so so if someone wants to uh, to connect with you and, and sign up for this, how do I do that? Yeah. So I do have a website. It's uh, brnoakfishing.com. Mm. And you can go on there and you can and look there. But the easiest way, um, I had uh, sent a form over to Rafi and, and Jared. It's linked over in the comment section. Click mm. that form. Just fill out the information. Kind of give me an idea of who you are, what you're looking for, and how I can help you guys achieve your goals. And then I'll get back with you and we'll figure out, you know, what we need to do to make it work. And then we'll figure out pricing and everything from there. But really my, the main starting point is kind of give me a breakdown of what you're looking for, ways that I can help you. And then um, we can reconnect and figure out how to make it work for you. I love that. Speaking of breakdowns, Rick. Yeah. Can you give us a breakdown on the new things that we're doing on the show? Yeah, I'm going to do that later. Oh, well, I thought that we're doing it in conjunction with phone calls. Oh, we can do that. Do we have people on the line already? No, because we haven't, we haven't oh, said we anything do. to anyone. We do. All right, so before we open the phone lines, I think they're already open, but, you know, we got rid of the golden tickets. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, one of the things we want to do is encourage people to call in, and uh, we think we found a, a really interesting way for you to do that. So I've got this fancy wheel here in the background. Yes, the wheel. And, I'm so uh, excited. And uh, I've written a few things here. Everything from uh, a pie to the face to a fishing rod to uh, some combat wipes, a bait pack, $25 donation to uh, Monster Bass Cares, uh, Rafi socks. We got Rafi socks? Rafi socks, hoodies. Hey, hey, you name it, hey, we got hey, it. So you want to so can you pop me on the screen for just one second? Yeah. Can I Shut can I up. show? Oh. Can I show the Put him on the Rafi screen stuff? by himself. Oh <laughs> yeah. Oh. So we've got Wait a second. So is that Nicolas can... Cage in Raising Arizona? <laughs> oh, it totally is. <laughs> Uh, so, hey, I got, there's chest hair when you get these home and you'll be able to see these, you put on a pair of Rafi socks. So you can actually, you know, people are like, Hey, does Rafi go fishing that often? Here's your chance. Take Rafi fishing with you. This is your opportunity. We got Rafi socks, got the monster bass. So I never, Chris, I Chris, hear me out. Hear me out. Was, can you make okay. condoms? <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Wait, for you know, who? Could Rafi, you imagine? <laughs> That's that. You know what? Probably the best birth control you can ever come <laughs> with. But that's fine. We'll just let that just sit out there. But anyway, I've always wanted we'll to care. take Rafi to bed. So I mean, <laughs> now's your chance. You can now's wear them. My... You can yeah. wear. You can take it to bed with you. You wear the socks, whatever. But hey, we got Rafi socks on the wheel. I figured I had to showcase. We got. The I love it. I all love right. it. So how we how, how we triggering the wheel? All right. So all you got to do is call in and ask a question. I don't care whether it's uh, asking Ben a question. Or uh, you just want to spin the wheel because you want to talk about Rafi socks. Um, at the end of the day, your participation helps us spin that wheel. So phone lines are open. Give us a call right now. You can talk to Ben. You can talk to myself or Rafi or Chris. I mean, if you want to talk to Fix, you can talk to him too. I mean, I'm sure we can get him on the line. Um, so, Ben, uh, before we start taking calls, can I ask you a couple questions about uh, you personally? Yeah, hit me with it. All right, random questions. Uh, your, your PB smallmouth is, uh, six pounds, nine ounces. Okay. That's disgusting. That's, <laughs> fi that's filthy. Uh, your, your, your PB large mouth. Oh, I know. Uh, 11 is. pounds, 12 ounces. So I that was that one it. right off the dock with, uh, the... no, I got this one with Mikey. Oh, you did? This, so, oh, yeah, so you Mikey... have one. Yeah, I caught this one a handful of years ago with Mikey. He called me down there, and we went down when he was catching them on a deep crankbait. And he's like, he, we graphed over this spot, and he saw these marks on his side imaging. He, I'm like, dude, those are some big boulders out there. He goes, those are bass. There's like eight bass out there. And so he fires this crankbait. He's like, that's the line. He's winding it back to the boat. He's like, oh, my God, there's one. And I go to get the net because it jumps. It's like 10 and a half pounds. And he's like, no, fire your crankbait. So I fire off there and I hooked up to a fish and uh, he had an 11 pounder even and I had an 11.75. Oh my God. That's it was crazy. In, that's insane. Pink, pink shorts, pink shorts or no pink shorts. That's what I want to know. I had flip flops <laughs> and way too warm of clothes. So. <laughs> All right. That's, that's a good story. That's pretty awesome. Which, what's your dream lake to fish or body of water? I don't know. I don't know. I really am like drawn to California area or like Oregon, like Columbia River. 
mm. in Washington, North Oregon. Um, I really want to go over that way somewhere. Last meal? Or, oh, um, like most recent Price or of- on death row? <laughs> 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 yeah, that's a great that's a great question. Last meal, most recent is uh, enchiladas. Ooh, que bueno! All right, yeah. you're in death row. A steak and some asparagus or something, pretty easy. All right, uh, you got one bait to fish for the rest of your life. A jig, for sure, like a half ounce compact flipping jig. Flipping jig. All right. A lot of people think I smallmouth fish a lot, but if I could just only fish one bait, it's just going to be a half ounce jig with like a a chigger craw on the back. I love it. I love fishing a jig. Really? Tell me more. Oh, yeah. I don't know. It catches a lot of big smallmouth too. Like you can, a lot of guys, you can change the way you fish it and catch a lot of smallmouth on it. Especially over the past couple of years, I've fished a compact jig like a lot for smallmouth. All right. So you roll up to a new body of water. And you want to start chucking a jig. What are you looking for? Um, if, if it's a largemouth lake, I'm going down the grass line or I'm going down docks and I'm fishing docks. If it's smallmouth, I'm going off the first break and I'm looking for like small inside turns or areas where like the point leads out. I'm starting on the inside edge of that point, anywhere that you have a turn in the bottom. That's where a lot of your like debris and stuff on the bottom is where composition changes are, are on those turns. And, and when, when there's a body of water and it's got large and small mouth in it, both of them at the same time, like, why don't they all hang out in the same places? Small mouth are too pelagic, so they'll follow that bait around, um, unless there's current, and then they're super current oriented. But large mouth are going to be up shallow. Well, typically, they're going to be shallow or in cover. Small mouth will be in open water. Lazy, so, lazy cousins. That's why I always tease. Like you've got these largemouth, and they just like to sit. They like to hide. And it's not that they're a better apex predator, but they just historically they sit still. And, and we like our lake. They actually they swim around a lot more because we get to see them now with forward facing sonar and what they're doing. And we call them like these wolf packs, and they're roving. You you hit it head on. These smallmouth they really move. And you go out to a spot, and it's wind driven, and they're set up on the bait. And as soon as that bait shifts, all of them are gone. Spots do the same thing in lakes, and your largemouth are really habit to you know they're like they they find a spot they like, and they find a spot that's easy to catch fish and to eat. And you mentioned the jig. I wanted to talk about that for a second. Do you fish a jig distinctively different? Because I think you mentioned that we're fishing right now in the middle of winter here in California, and I'm fishing a jig in the middle of the lake where I normally don't fish a jig and I'm fishing it instead of just slow crawling it, I'm actually hopping it a little more and trying to call the fish to see this bigger, easier bait and then letting it sit a little longer. And I'm having tremendous success finding fish with a jig in the middle of winter. Talk about downsizing all that. How do you fish a jig different for largemouth versus smallmouth? Yeah, so smallmouth, super reaction based. It's very interesting that you said with the colder water, you're fishing it faster. So one of the things that I do for our smallmouth, especially in cold water, is I'll take my half ounce. I use a Beast Coast uh, OW sniper, so it doesn't have a weed guard. But I'll take that half ounce jig with a small trailer and put it on a spinning rod. So that way it falls super fast. Um, That's like the only way to get bit is on the fall. And if they don't eat it on the fall, you like have to work it really hard to get them to come over and nose down and eat it. If they don't eat it on the drag very well. And that's kind of, that's what I'm doing right now is I, if I throw a jig out there historically and just kind of move it and that's like to those bass that are in the summertime and they're kind of, they're waiting and you talk about the lateral line that goes out, you got to fish. And these are some things to help people. And I'd like to share some information. If you've got a two foot long fish, that's 24 inches. It's a big fish. It's lateral line really only keys in about double its body length away from it. And that's subtle movements, little small movements. It sees that jig perfectly, but to hear it and to bounce it and to key into it, everyone since winter time slow down i'm finding i need to make more of an aggressive move to call that fish to even notice it and that's like that fall that transition i fish the fall on so many baits that's how i fish even if it's a ned rig i i find i do better constantly casting covering more water that fall is what really catches the attention maybe let it did stick move it a little bit and then if i don't get bit i'm going to recast so i I appreciate that feedback because that's 
kind of the same success. And I'm fishing that way for largemouth during the cold. And it's interesting because that's probably more what smallmouth are doing just in cold water all year long because your water's colder than our water. Yeah. It's like a blade though. You, you said you like to fish a blade. So monster bass, oh. I just did an article with Shay um, mm. on the vibe master, <clears throat> but yep. dude, I love a blade. And what makes it so successful in the winter is literally that super tight vibration and action when it comes up and then falls back to bottom. Like I'll fish it on a spinning rod cause you can get that bait to activate super fast and it falls yeah. immediately back down and it's a heavy bait. Yeah. But the Love amount it. of bites that you get when you lift that oh, thing up and before it even goes back down, like I have a video I just posted. Those fish eat the blade so deep. And I've never, yeah. like they don't do this with any other bait. They'll eat yeah. it so deep. You have to like get the pliers way deep. No, I was going to say, bring, bring the pliers. That's the bait. I mean, if you're fishing yes. that bait and it's fun because it, that technique, I throw it as far as I can. And that little yes. micro pulse, it comes up. And then I always try to make sure I have some tension because then it, it comes back and you see that take on the fall, that twitch of the line. That's when I catch the majority of my fish is on that fall. It's like that bait fish ball. Maybe a fish has ran into another. They've stunned themselves and it's falling out. That bass, I, I tease, they can't process in their brain and make a decision to eat it because of how they've been living for millions of years. They have to eat it. And so that's why that blade bait is so effective. It's awesome. Yes. Exactly. Hey, we got a couple of people on the line, don't we? We sure do. What do you say we? Uh, what do you say we take some co- some questions and spin the wheel? I like it. Sure. Uh, we're gonna start with an unknown caller that's been waiting for seventeen minutes Ooh. with a two three one wow. area code somewhere in Michigan. Oh. Two three one. Go ahead, caller. Welcome to the show. Ah, uh, that's me. This is Brandon Wheaton. Hello. Hey, Brandon. Can you hear? Oh, can you hear me? I can hear you. Yep, we can hear you. Right on. Uh, The first time calling in, although I try to catch it every Wednesday and have on Thursdays when it was back then. Um, So my story, uh, I used to fish, I was born in 1985. I used to fish when I was younger with my dad. He'd take me out in the canoe. I was always looking for bass, though. Back then, before we had YouTube, I was getting books at the library, buying books, ordering them online, where I could find them, getting them to learn how to bass fish, which of course taught me that, um, you know, I need some like 60 pound braid to pull that 16 pound lunker out of those lily pads, which up here in Michigan, I really didn't. But my dad <laughs> indulged me. Uh, you know, I remember picking up spider wire in the, at Walmart and that was a disaster. Um, but I do remember no matter how much we went out, uh, we could get skunked all day. And in the end, I threw one of those uh, cheap two-dollar worms, you know, the ones with the um, already pre-strung, have three hooks in them. I forget exactly what they're called. Yeah, like two dollars. And I had a pink one that no matter what, throw that at the lily pads, and I'd always pull something out. Um, Did it have the white stripe on it? Pink, Pink with the white stripe and like two dots? This one does not. My son's first bass at four years old, he caught, he picked a yellow one with a black stripe and a black dot. So I'm thinking same brand, but I can't, I just can't remember the name. But, um, so as it happens, life gets in the way. Uh, I didn't fish for decades. Then before COVID happened, I was already working from home. I'm a computer guy. I was already working from home. So that happened. And I had time to get back into my hobbies, one of which was fishing. So this kind of picks back up in 2020. And, um, you know, the other one is I build models. But anyway, the point is I got back into fishing and I didn't know where to start. I couldn't cast a bait caster for the life of me. Um, And so I just started picking up whatever cheap rods and reels I could find on clearance. I ended up looking on YouTube and there's a lot of convoluted videos, you know, well, you guys know what it's like these days, too much of check this out or click this and blah, blah. And it's instead of just getting to the point or what I need to see or what I need to learn. So I ended up, uh, falling upon fluke master Gene Jensen Mm. and his Friday night live show. Yeah. And I, and I started asking him questions. So I tuned into that. I asked him, I said, look, I'm from Michigan. 
Weather is crazy up here, even at the best of times. Um, I'm just getting back in. I don't know what to do. And his advice was, ask Ben Nowak. So, oh, that's uh, crazy. Ben's YouTube. Amazing. That's cool. Yeah, bo- bothered him for a couple live shows. And in the end, the lesson was basically, get out there, get the experience, do it. Like, I have a subset of lakes that I fish, so I'm getting to know them, um, getting the experience, and learning as I go. And um, doing that, that's what led me to Monster Bass, because as soon as I saw, like, I'm focused. I have My friends and buddies, they fish for trout, panfish, that sort of thing. I'm just looking for the big bass. So um, when I found Monster Bass almost two years ago, that was my thing. And what sold me on it versus any other loot box was regional, like set to my region. That's, that's made all the difference. And in 2022, I caught my pers- first ever and personal best smallie. And in 2023, I caught my personal best largemouth that's right amazing. in my hometown lake. Nice. That's, that's yeah. awesome. And amazing. It's, it's all thanks to all of you guys. That's so cool. If you got a pick in details, send that to uh, marketing at monsterbass.com. We could feature you on the show and uh, put you on our website. Yep, I haven't yet. I've just been getting around to it, but yeah, I will. Awesome. That's amazing. Um, I, I did have, so I do have one question. And um, basically, it's uh, here's what I have for rods and reels now. And I'm getting set up for the spring. What do I need? Real quick, basically, all my rods are medium heavy, fast, between 610 and 7.3. Uh, half of them I got from, you know, signing up for monster bass and reels and rods like uh so i have um a 610 medium heavy 7.1 speed bait caster with a 65 pound braid the idea is to use that for jigging uh i've got another bait caster basically a abu garcia vengeance combo with 14 pound floral one more bait caster and that is on a 13 fishing rod with 12 pound floral and then i have four spinning rods even though i prefer bait caster i have four spinning rods ranging from um you know they're all a little lighter but uh i have like a 15 pound i think it's the proficiency reel that i got from monster bass 13 fishing uh source 2k reel from monster bass uh what do I need to add to my collection? I'm looking for a new rod or a new reel. What do I need to, I'm, st- I'm getting to that point where I want to start to specialize. Probably a crankbait rod, like a seven foot medium. Then you can use it for crankbaits. You can use it for jerk baits. Um, especially in the spring, like jerk bait fishing is one of my favorite ways to catch them as well as throwing a lipless crankbait. So that seven foot medium bait casting rod with like a six or seven speed bait cast reel and then 12 to 15 pound test fluorocarbon. Like you can do so many, probably 12 pound test. You can do so many different things with that, whether it's chatter bait, jerk bait, bunch of different things. That, that sounds yeah. good. I'm a, I'm a big fan of crank bait. Don't get to use them as much as I want to, but I'm a big fan. Um, but the jerk bait is something I've been struggling with. So I think, yeah, that's a good idea. I'll, uh, look into that thank you so much no and I, I like that i mean to share that the thought that ben's having and to go that little extra piece to let you know that lighter setup everyone's thinking i need to go heavier because some he could have said go heavier and get a bigger jig having that rod that's a lighter flexibility it's going to allow the tip and just to give you the reason is that crankbait needs to react and it has this opportunity to move and having a rod that's too stiff dampens that bait and doesn't allow the bait to work properly. So that's the reason you want a lighter rod is to let the bait have the proper action. Same thing with the jerk bait is it's almost like a snap and a jerk. Also with those, you get a jerk bait with real small hooks. You need a rod that has a little more flexibility to keep that bait pinned in the fish's mouth. So just to give you a couple of reasons when you buy it and your friends are like, Oh yeah, why are you buying something that's lighter weight? You're going to catch smaller fish. That's There's a specific reason that a lighter weight rod is actually better for different applications. So that helps out a little bit. That's some good info. Yep. And I've, I've, heard, I've heard that before, but hearing explained why, I appreciate that. Yeah, heck yeah. All right. Now, before you go, I mean, you are our very first caller. <laughs> so we're going to spin the wheel here. Right we're going to spin the wheel here and see what happens. All right. 
Here we go. Let's do it. I'm so excited. This is so. I'm surprised the wheel price held is, up. Price is right. All right, you want a hoodie? Yes. All oh right. Do, do me a favor. Email us at marketing at monsterbash.com with your name, address, and hoodie size, and we'll hook you up. Will do. All right. Thanks uh, a lot, he, man. Chris he needs a pair of socks, too. He socks he to go with the hoodie. <laughs> Dude, he died. I, let's get Rafi's face on the hoodie. That's, <laughs> he's so excited to get a hoodie, and then it comes with Rafi's face. He's oh, like, my God. Oh. Can you imagine? I love it. It's so good. I'm Thank down. You guys. Looking forward to the rest of the show. All right, man. Uh, Thank you. Thank you. All right. Who else we got? Let's see. We got somebody from Birmingham, Alabama. That makes me nervous. Let's take it. <laughs> can you hear me? We can hear you. Yeah, so kind of misleading. Area code. I'm actually in the Indiana, Central Indiana. Okay. This is Daniel Pierce. Got a question for Rick. Um, wanted to call in last week and couldn't call in, so I'll throw a question out this week. And kind of reflecting back to all the years building monster bass. Um, what would you say yeah. was the decision that you were the most excited to make for the company? And then follow-up question, were the results from that decision what you expected? What was the decision? Can, can you repeat that first question? The decision that I made that I was... Yeah. Well, the most excited, excited to make about. for the company. Um, yeah, I'd have to, I'd, I'd have to say that the decision to make longer sticks was, was the one that I was most excited about because I spent a lot of time researching it. Like, because it was also the scariest one, right? Because, you know, you can make a bait and the bait, let's just say the bait cost a buck or two. Um, rods cost a lot of money and I've heard all these horror stories of, of companies that, you know. They bought the, you know, they manufactured the rods, they got them, they came over and then they started having all sorts of defects. And then, you know, you've got a warranty problem and you can, you know, you can blow a hundred thousand dollars. And, uh, you know, when we went the route of working with Will Stewart to, to design these rods and design the blank, the way that, you know, ultimately we wanted to, um, it was an opportunity for me to learn about rod making because I'm not a rod designer, like, um, you know, but the opportunity to sit with him and, and learn about what makes a really good rod and the different choices that we made and why was, was really amazing. And then the outcome, obviously, you know, because we've sold thousands and thousands of them and, and literally I knock on wood, the warranty claims, I can count them on one hand. And uh, so we've made a really quality product. And so I'm really proud of that. I'm really proud of the, the, the process and, and the, and the way that we did that. Does that answer your question? Yeah, absolutely. That, it's, it's really cool. And you guys did, you guys knocked it out of the park with the, the Lunker 6 and, Thank you. and all aspects of it. Not not just the design build, but marketing and, and price point and all that. You guys did awesome with it. So Yeah, thank you. I, I definitely, I mean, to be honest with you, I owe a lot to Will because, I mean, he's the, he's the designer. He's the, you know, we could have easily just gone the way of some of the brands that just, you know, here's a factory blank, but. We want, I wanted, I wanted to design something that a, I could, I could bet confidently that I was going to spend a lot of money to pre-order a lot of rods and have them come out the way that they did. And so I, I feel really good about that. That's awesome. Well, that's all I had. I just want to call in and ask that question and encourage you guys to keep doing it. Hey, I appreciate you. And uh, let's spin the wheel. What do you say? All right, sounds good. All right. Wheel of fish. Oh. Oh. <laughs> uh, somebody has to go jump in the pool. Shut up. <laughs> so yeah. it can either be Rafi or Fix. What about you, Rick? It could be me, but, you know. That's, yeah. <laughs> this is so great. <laughs> or or you can the temperature the pool? In the pool? yeah the, i was gonna say how the cold pool's the pool? probably about 50 degrees yeah i've been cold plunging at our it's lake like every day plunge. so this is good yeah yeah, yeah. 
This is good. This is important. This is healthy. So I, yeah. if I was there, I would do it. I have a cold plunge today. I did it yesterday and I, it's so therapeutic. It's so yeah. important for people to do hard things in this comfortable yeah. world we all live in. Sitting in our warm environments that are 70 degrees, yeah. 24 hours a day. Somebody get in the pool. Like, who, who, do, you, a better who do you want to jump in the pool? You know, I, I think, Ra- I mean, Ra- it, Rafi Fixer myself. I think it would be really nice to see Rafi do this because I think Rafi, I think, you know, Rafi. I don't know. I've I've seen you over there in the chat been grilled today and we got the Rafi I've been getting grilled today. (laughs) He's getting hammered in there. And so let's get Rafi to get in the pool to release the endorphins. If you can, let's let's, let's do it. He's got to cleanse himself after getting on on camera in yoga pants. Ah. Oh my you god. You know what, Nathaniel, you're my uh, least favorite caller. <laughs> I love it. Are we taking this out there? You want me to have it just so you can turn it over? Sure. All right. Yeah. This is perfect. This is amazing. Wait, we, don't you need to be plugged into something? No. No, we can keep talking while he's doing this. Yeah, this get him ready. Then we'll yeah, we'll transfer over to his little shot. Oh so no, he's going right now. <laughs> This is amazing. This is the worst. Yeah, this is so good. I know well, Alex is... Rudd's all about cold plunge. I'm loving it. It's I so know. Hear me. Yeah, yeah, we can hear it's you. All right. Well, you're not going to be able to hear in a minute. All right. I'll narrate it for you. Oh, this is so good. He's going into my backyard. And no, tell him, yell at him. No just jumping in real quick. You got to be in there for a few minutes. Oh. Oh, is he going to jump in with his jeans on? Those no, 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 no. He's not jumping in with his jeans on. Tell him not to jump in with his clothes. <laughs> no, no, no. Just don't. Rafi, you got to wear yeah, clothes. Next. Oh, there it is. Yeah. Wife beater and all. Nice. All right. You can't, can you say what? What do you call it nowadays? You can't call it a wife beater, can you? Oh, dear God. Oh, my God. My dogs. This is so good. Yeah. Uh. At your house? This is so, oh my God. Amazing. I can't believe that he's was, doing this. A great, that was a great jump, too. Oh. Daddy! Oh. He champed that like it was nothing. That's amazing. All right, Fix. Come on, Fix. Get us back on the screen. Then you can grab my towel from the, from the thing. Yeah. Wow. So going forward, going forward, you just got to put a weight on the bottom of the wheel so it lands on that every time. So he's got to take a one-inch week. Are you saying that you could have kept us on all four like that the whole time? It's pretty good. Okay. There's towels in the Maximus's. No, no, in the by his bedroom. There's a closet. All right. So listen. Um, I appreciate you calling in and uh, making J- Rafi jump in the pool because, to be honest with you, I didn't want to jump in the pool. No, nah, that's pretty good. <laughs> here he comes, like a like a like a like a a, a a hero conquering. He comes back. Look at that! I'm telling you, he's the endorphins. I'm excited for him, and, and that's uh. actually called a white. It's a wife pleaser now oh a wife pleaser yeah it's the a tank he looks so sexy so the wife pleaser this is the worst show ever (laughs) let's get some more callers and we can spin the wheel (laughs) yeah let's keep the towel handy i'm all wet oh my goodness hey ben Ben, do you do anything weird like that do you do cold plunging at all have you ever done that no i've been doing the cold shower thing but not the not the plunge yet. Yeah, no, the cold shower is good. It's it's like four times less effective. Like getting into submerged, like fully cold water is pretty intense. But no, cold shower has its benefits. So hey, hey, Rafi, thanks for doing that for all of us. I feel better myself. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank you. You look better. I could really feel the endorphins uh, kicking in, That's and so uh, good. I've now transformed somehow into chic Rafi. <laughs> That's okay. Perfect. Well, let's let's take another call. I mean, listen, this is great. All right. Let's see who we're. Uh, we got someone from uh, with a seven oh seven number uh, in Ukiah, Cal- Ooh. California. Yeah. Great. Welcome to the show. Hey, how's it going? Hello. Thanks for having me. Hey, do you got your hey, head you out the me? window? No, I don't have my head out the window. I was just driving. <laughs> Fair. Hear me better now. 
Yeah, better. Yeah, yeah, yeah perfect. So how's, okay. how's it going? You got a question? Yeah, I do. Actually, not in, not in California anymore. Just have a number forever when I was stationed out there in the Marines. But Thank you for your service. So, I guess my question, I, this is my first year getting back into bass fishing. Um, basically, I had a disabled veterans fishing tournament um, back here in, in Little Lake in um, Arkansas. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Yep, we can hear you. Oh, okay, cool, cool. So uh, I was fishing out there, just disabled veterans fishing tournament. They brought pros in. All the veterans got matched up with pros to go out there. And me and the guy I got hooked up with, um, his name is Scott, he, he took me out and sold me on the jig. And uh, I've been jig fishing since then, and it, it was great. Um, I just started my first tournament series last year with the um, – um, Armed Forces Fishing League, um, new league just kind of branching out and starting to develop for veterans and first responders and military personnel and stuff. That's either, you know, starting to get in the league and stuff. And finished third in Louisiana. Um, this year, we're just starting out. Um, we just had a real bad cold snap and storms come through, you know, snow on the ground for a week, water temp dropped down to the low 40s, you know, 10 degree shift. Water temps are just now getting back to where they were before the cold snap hit, but all of the water is still pretty cloudy, and I am having a hard time really being able to target fish. I can see them. I can see them moving around. They're falling bait balls, getting in there. But every technique I threw before, not working, try going with, the jig, low crawling it, you know, moving it, almost dropping it on their faces and still not getting really any type of hookup. Yeah, can I, I want to know some more info. Where, what's the depth? You said you're seeing these fish. What depth are they? Okay. So and then maybe a little bit of water the, temp, if you could tell me a little bit about that. So my, the water temp that where I was fishing this past weekend at this last tournament is a small lake called Grand Bayou here in Louisiana. Um, very small lake. Uh, water depth was ranging between four to, um, I, I want to say it was about 20, 22. Um, seeing shad balls in the 12 to 15 foot range and, you know, seeing fish underneath those shad balls, but they're pretty much on the bottom. I tried throwing um, blades and all that kind of stuff, just dump it on there and make it look like a you know dying fish, but I'm still there just not committing to anything. What's the water temp? Water temp that day was 45. Oh, wow. So it's like really cold. Yeah. And to go out there today, um, different lake but similar conditions, water temp is up 10 degrees from that because it was, you know, it was 54 today at water temp, and I was expecting, you know, because that's where I was pulling numbers, not size, but pulling a lot of numbers before this cold snap came through. But today, there's nothing. I mean, they're just not moving on anything. And last question before I, I give you my insight, I want to hear what Ben does first. Um, what did you have success on before the cold snap? Actually, it was the, the lure that Monster Bass sent me. Um, it was this rattle trap that was had a little bit of green and black and silver on it. And I was just like, I looked at that thing. I was like, ah, green. Uh, I don't know about this green. I don't get anything on green. It's usually blue, black, or red. Uh, but screw it. Throw it out there. And I mean, it was just one after another after another of like half pound to two pounders. But you and know, how are you, how are you fishing? Size, just, this, this is a this is I guess the next detailed thing because this is, you gave us some good information. So you got this rattle trap lipless that you're using. It's making some noise. How were you fishing that to those fish? How did so you? So I was it? looking at. I, I was using my forward facing sonar. I see my bait balls. I was going past the bait balls and watching the bait fall till it got to about the bottom of the bait ball, and then I would do a slow retrieve stop let it fall for a little bit and then I'm not going to say jerk it, but I, I would do a little bit heavier of a pull to make some noise and then pull and then go back into a slow retrieve and then do another stop. 
Hey, you fished it like a blade bait a little bit. No, that's <laughs> that's kind of the right. I tease. I call those a hollow bodied blade bait. So Ben, you're now you're right. what's cool is the caller. You now have an opportunity. You've just hired Ben. You're fishing with Ben as your virtual coach. Yeah. So Ben, before I give any insight, take it away. You're fishing with Ben. Let's tell you, let's hear it. Yeah. I think my big thing is I'm probably going to pick up a moving bait. So whether that's a spinner bait or I was going to say lipless crank bait or even a jerk bait as the water gets clear, cleaner, like if you can sink a jerk bait down to or below that bait ball, especially with forward facing, like that's going to be a bait that's going to catch a lot of fish right now. Um, a spinner bait is one of those baits okay. like a, I'm just going to crawl a spinner bait. Like let it sink, especially if you're fishing less than 12 foot of water, let it get almost to bottom and just crawl it and bump it off everything, whether it's wood, rock, like I'm trying to fish around thick, heavy cover that's holding heat this time of year. Um, especially if I'm fishing, you know, more shallow water. And then with the lipless, you're doing right. probably the right thing and you can mix in like a Demiki rig. So like some sort of um, soft plastic fluke style bait on a jig head and just hold right. it and like Demiki it above those fish. Okay. But honestly, like I'm looking for hard cover in moderate shallow water, like especially as that water starts to come up and warm over the next, you know, little bit and get a little bit cleaner. Like I'm looking for hard cover. Really, I'm looking for wood. Um, it's going to hold heat the longest and rock, which is going to heat up the fastest. And then grass is going to basically be mm -hmm. an ecosystem, natural ecosystem. Right. Okay. And I'll, I'll give you the fish. With the the rocks with it. Yeah, you're, I, I'm going to tell you the fishing with Chris answer too is you've got forward facing sonar. You're seeing a bait ball. The weather's changed. The clarity of the water's changed. If you see bait, you're actually throwing a bait and the fish are coming towards it and they get close and they make a decision to not eat it. That's your chance. You're doing the work to call a fish to it. Now you get to make an adjustment really quickly. Go, go bigger or mm -hmm. go smaller. And so this is this thing is their eyes are kind of taken out of the equation. You're telling us that the water's gotten dirty. So they need to probably hear it or zero in on it when they get close enough. If they're feeding on a bait ball and specifically those fish that they're eating, they're keyed into maybe a two, two and a half inch long fish or a four inch fish. You need to present something that's going to change their perception of what they're trying to eat. So if you're getting them close to you and you got this soft plastic, the fluke is awesome. And everyone's using this term Demiki rig because it's mm. more of a vertical presentation with soft plastic. Maybe go a bigger fluke and shake it in front of them and then go really small. Think of like a hosel dong that has the opportunity to have a boot tail and to still be making some noise in front of that fish, but it's a really small presentation. So take that opportunity. You're not getting bit upsize and then really downsize and see if you can get the fish to trigger on something no, like that. So just, can I ask a question on what you were saying about, about you know, really making them zero in on it and stuff? Um, I'm, I'm trying to match similar to what the bait fish look like, what we have out here. You just uh, basically, you know, silver shad, you know, usually varying between two and four inches this time of year. Yep. Whenever I'm doing the it, it color contrast with them, is, is that something that is a thing to be able to make them stand out a little bit more when the water clarity actually clears up and what type of contrast should I be doing it against those fish? I'm going with a solid color bait. So like a white or like a chartreuse or something that's going to stand out a little more. If you were fishing a chrome bait, that chrome is going to flash really well as that water gets cleaner and it gets sunny outside. But like if that water's off color and you're fishing dirtier water, I'm going with more solid color bait especially like okay. trying to match a shad or something like a white bait or like a sexy shad where you get that white bait and then you have a hard yellow line down the side, just something that will kind of stand mm -hmm. out, but still silhouette when that water's off color. Awesome. All right. Thank you. Nailed it. Yeah. Let us know. Let it get, get back out on that lake before the water changes and let us know if that helped. That's the fun part. Right. I'm going back out tomorrow morning, so uh, I'll figure it out. <laughs> amazing. Amazing. <laughs> Well, let's spin this wheel. No before, more wheel. Yeah. No more wheel. Before you go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> let's spin the wheel. Back in the pool. Very excited. Oh, my God. <laughs> Shut right up. There. Somebody oh. jumps Someone in jumps in the pool. <laughs> I hate this wheel. Yeah, Ralph, so, you didn't stay in the pool. Right, I'll tell you what. I'll, I'll, like I'll let the caller. Minutes. Caller, you want me to spin it again, or you want you want to make someone jump in the pool? Right. Spin, spin, spin the wheel. Oh, thank you. Oh, it lets you off the hook. 
Can you imagine if they made Robbie jump in the pool again? I would have oh, done, no. I, I right. done it. <laughs> uh, the wheel's rigged. Uh, a Monster Bass hoodie. So congratulations. Send, <laughs> send us your address, your, your, your name and address and hoodie size. Send it to marketing at monsterbass.com. We'll hook you up with a hoodie. All right, man. Appreciate y'all. All right. Appreciate you, man. I love, take it easy. All right. I love this wheel. I hate this wheel. I love it. Let's go to the next caller. No, there's some there's some really good ones on here, like like things for fix to do. Oh, it's good. It's good. All right. We are going to go. Well, let's get a familiar one on. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, Gramps. No. Oh. <laughs> What's up, everybody? What's Welcome going back on? to YouTube, Gramps. Yeah, congratulations. You're out of timeout. <laughs> I'm back. That was an amazing and PR so, stunt. <laughs> yeah. 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 I, I, I'm going to tell you guys right now. I don't. I don't really suffer that much from anxiety. But this last week, um, when I thought I was losing four years worth of work and effort, um, really, really got to me. Uh, so I, I, I may need a cold water plunge. But uh, anywho, we're, we'll be back and we'll be we'll be discussing that a bit later this evening. We're going live at eight thirty with uh, with uh, Russ Snyder's. But I wanted to talk to Ben because Ben, I can't believe, dude. I think I reached out to you like a year ago to talk about smallies and whatnot, and I kind of forgot about it. And this year, um, we're really going to be focused on smallmouth bass because I got a little taste of it here at the end of the year and caught my PB my last time out. And uh, before we had to put the kayaks away, and, uh, dude, it was one of the most incredible days on the water I've had. So I've had a couple of really good days chasing smallies this year, and I'm literally going to be like a, a kid all over again, all the years that I've been fishing for largemouth, and now I've got the bug. So I guess my, my first question for you is, I, I think you fish probably more lakes than, like, rivers and creeks and whatnot for smallies, but... Yeah. You know, kind of that being said, when when you get the first open water, um, what are you what are you targeting, and what kind of areas are you targeting? Because you know we fish a lot of lakes and rivers here too, but most of our smallies are in the rivers. But kind of tell me what your you know first time out in the boat. Um, what are you targeting? What are you throwing? And how are you you know getting getting it on in the early season? I actually fish a lot of rivers and creeks like really early in the year because they'll warm up a lot faster. Um, and basically early season, I'm fishing like heavy current flow areas. So I'm looking for areas where you have some sort of rock, rock or hard bottom with a steep break on it with a channel swing. So that's basically where I'm going to set up at the beginning of the year. And then if you get any sort of cover, whether it's wood in the water, whether it's you know, something that's holding heat or warming up faster. Like I'm focused on warm, warm water this early season. So like any, anything that's going to heat up, hold heat longer, dark bottom areas, just anything that's going to warm up faster. And a lot of times it's moving water. Okay. Gotcha. Whereas like this time of year, if you find open water, definitely deeper, definitely slower, you know, yeah, I'm looking for those fish or areas where those fish can slide up on faster, whether it's a hump, some sort of, you know, current change, whether it's, you know, a hump that that current can move over faster and then they'll sit on the push or on the on the backside of it. But I'm looking for those areas where you have really easy ambush points and, and these mm. fish can set up on in pretty big numbers, not just in, okay. individual Are you fish. Still, got you. And you're still throwing super slow baits at that, at that point still? Not really. Um, I'll throw a crankbait early, early season. Like as soon as that water starts warming up or I'll throw a jerk bait. Um, only time I'll really start to slow down is if like, only time I'll really start to slow down is if I'm not having a ton of success, then I'll pick up a jig and like flip a jig. But I, I cover a lot of water. Then when you get a bite, slow down. Sorry if I seem a little distracted. It sounds like one of the girls is screaming in the background. <laughs> now we get it. You're yeah. You're doing oh, no, good, that's, man. That's the the father no, no, skills. Yeah, that's awesome. But yeah, I'll, I'll fish <laughs> yeah, fast until I locate one. And this this is the time of year, early spring, late winter. Like fish are going to be in bigger numbers. I'm fishing fast. I'm covering a lot of water. When you catch one fish, then you slow down and start to pick apart that area. 
I apologize, Gramps. I got to go um, help my daughter. I'll be, I'll be back here in a couple minutes. Mm. No, nope, nope, that's good, brother. I appreciate your time. We'll talk soon, though. Hit me up on Instagram for sure. I'd love to hop on and, and chat some small mouth with you. I already shot you a message earlier <laughs> when I saw you were right, on perfect. tonight. Yeah. Perfect. Cool. Thanks, man. I'll be right back, guys. All right. Gramps. Oh, we're not just going to sit here quietly no. and wait? Okay, let's sit. Okay. Oh, yeah, no, yeah, no talking. So, so what I'm what I'm hearing is, Rick, I've got uh, I've got a good reason to pick up that that Gramps colored chartreuse black back flat line. Yeah. And buy lunker sticks and uh, and and put it to work early in the season because I'm sure we all remember how I like cold water and monster bass crankbaits in the early season. So maybe that'll be the opening fish of the year. Maybe. When we get out there and do this work. I love it. I love it. Hey, yeah, Gramps, I was going to jump like in. I, frog challenge part two. You've got it. I, Gramps, I'll just share a little bit. I know that Ben was giving you this insight, and I think for our listeners and people to gain a little perspective is we always talk about warm water, <laughs> and in the winter time, because the surface temperature with the air is so cold, it really affects the upper portion of the water. So now the warmer water is actually down deeper. The more consistent temperature is deeper. And that's a lot of times why the fish go down into a deeper habitat during the winter time. That is truly the warmer water. And then Ben's talking about looking for structure, anything that can gain that sunlight, all those rocks, those steep areas where the fish can come up quickly and attack that flat side. That's where you're going to have that early spring success. And and he's right. I like the same kind of thing as moving a bait, seeing if those fish, those first fish that are really smart. And this is the thing to consider as well around fish. The biggest fish that have lived the longest, the ones that are getting ready to spawn, it's it's pre pre spawn. Those are the fish that are like, hey, I need to go and feed. January in California is some of the best times to catch the biggest fish. And historically, Feb January, February, you get the record breakers because mm. those fish are like, I need to eat something because I know the weather's turning. And you really think about this winter solstice that happened. That was the celebration for millions of years. That's like people like historically 20, 30, 40,000 years, people celebrated the change that the sun is returning. Fish still live by that. And fish are like, wow, the days are longer. And in a month's time, you got 30 extra minutes of sunlight. That's really important to a fish in their lifespan of what's happening and where they're eating. So key into that, that sun comes around, it heats up, changes the water temperature. Those fish start to get active and, and moving a bait a little faster, you're going to find some fish. So those are, those are some little tips to just share with the listeners of what's really going on in the mind of a fish. Yeah, it, 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 it's funny that you say that because I've literally, in my 40 years of bass fishing for largemouth, I've got quite a few videos that pretty much sum up exactly what you just said. And you were able to capture all that in about 30 seconds. So that really works out yeah. well. <laughs> so, that's, that's, I just love the information. I'm on this quest to learn as much as I can. And, and it's so fun when you understand fish better. I'll give a little preview. We'll talk about later, but next week we have an aquatic biologist and Shan is going to be on and He just was on another podcast, talked for like an hour and a half about bluegills and bluegill life cycle and what goes on. Yeah, he was on with uh, our good friend, Andrew Hayes over at Tackle Talk, hundred percent. Yeah, he was. He's, he's been on there like five times. He's going to be on the show next week. And the, just to glean the information that he has about bluegills will make you fish better, but he, it's just so fun to learn the information, yeah, Jan is, understand Jan how fish is the man. That is for sure. Oh, super cool. And he talks at my level and other, just the normal layman's level to understand. He is a biologist with a degree that can still talk to me and I can make sense of it. So I'm super excited, but yeah, it's, it's awesome. You, you do a great program. You share all these things with people and you're teaching folks and, and the stuff you've learned, like you said, over a lifespan and for all of us to be able to pass that on to people that are just getting in the sport. So much fun. Oh, 100 percent, 100 percent. All right, I have got to get up here and grab some dinner before my live stream. But it was good talking to you guys and uh, Rafi Rick. We still need to chat about 2024 and get some game plans together. We sure do. But before you go, Gramps, oh, we got no. we got to no, spin no, we got to no, spin no. the wheel. No, no, no. Yeah, hold on. Gramps. The glare Ready? on the wheel. No just, one can see it. It's not don't, working. Don't worry. Though. I'll tell you. We'll fix That's the right. glare for next week. <laughs> A $25 gift card. Yeah, perfect. There you go. You can use it or you can give it away to someone on your show. I think he's, I think he's giving want. away on his live. That's awesome. Look at, that's pretty cool. Yeah, I'll give it. Yep, I'll, I will 100% <laughs> give it away on my live. So everybody hop over to Fisherman Gramps after Monster Bass Live, and we will see you in there. 
Good stuff. At the rate Rick's doing whippets, the show might be over pretty soon. <laughs> well, I think the big I think the biggest challenge is how do I log this in my food app for yeah, my nutritionist? Think of that. Three squirts of, of whipped cream. Just say like, thanks for holding the can the yeah. proper way and huffing because you know we have all these people in the chat. I'm super excited. What is going on with the whipped cream? Because I know you're on a cleanse. You got to climb <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mount Kilimanjaro. Give us some insight. What's what's the well, new huff? There, well, because we don't have pies, and I just put together the wheel today. There's a, a couple oh, slots okay, on here right. for pie to the face, and so uh, we might do some whipped cream. All right, makes sense. Yeah, you got to test it. I think I, I had no idea why all of a sudden you have whipped cream in the studio. Now I, I feel good. Oh uh, yeah, it's one of my feel good snacks. You know. It's all about taking care of myself in 2024. That's way better than a cold plunge. Yeah. <laughs> hey, the cold plunge is good for you. Yeah. Gramps, you're still on the phone? <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> Goodbye. See you, Gramps. <laughs> all right. Who else we got? All right, we got T-Rex. He's been on for a while. No. Oh. Who is it? This is 49 minutes, Rafi. Come on. <laughs> Shut up. You've been on waiting for 49 minutes. Yeah. 49 minutes. Yeah, he hasn't even turned off the uh, his, the audio on his computer yet. Oh, my God. Is, I, I'm not even on my computer. I'm on my phone. Oh, fair. <laughs> yeah. I had well, on speakerphone. That was my bad. Uh, T Rex, how's it going, man? T Rex, how's it going, man? Good, good. You know, I wait all day to talk to Benjamin Nowak. All I hear is echo. Actually, hey. Still? Yeah. It's now, like, starting for the New York Knicks. Starting for the New York Knicks. <laughs> Heartbreaker. Heartbreaker. <laughs> Here, T-Rex, push, push, the, push the antenna down on your, uh, on your mobile phone. Yeah. Hey Rick, okay. can you can you pass me the whipped cream? I mean, come on, I want to take it. <laughs> Welcome back, Ben. Welcome back, Ben. Thanks. <laughs> we had to read some bedtime stories every uh, day. T uh, Rex has been on hold fifty uh, minutes for this. <laughs> did he figure? Did he figure it out? Uh, what do you think? What do you think? What do you think? <laughs> No. <laughs> All right, click. Hang up. Try yeah, again. Yeah, yeah. Oh T Rex. T Rex. Hang up. Ha yeah, yeah. Hang up call and call back. right back. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. Oh my god. Should we take another call? <laughs> oh, the burly hype man. I can't believe he just did that. That's harsh. <laughs> Let's take another call while we're waiting for T Rex to call back. All right. We'll just be quick. All right, let's do our old friend from Tulsa, Matt Brown. We're going to be catching up with him in uh, about a month and a half. Ooh. Hey, guys. What's going uh, on, man? I've got a question. I, I have a question or, for guess, you first, and it has to do with how much uh, duck sure. pastrami you're curing in preparation for us coming out to the Classic. <laughs> well, duck season ended up being a little slower than I expected. So I'll have to figure out how to hunt me down a buddy that's got some duck left over. That's uh, fine. We just won't go to the classic. Yeah, it's fine. Well, that's, that's okay. Uh, I'll take that <laughs> then. <laughs> uh, no, we, uh, we, uh, it was a rough year. We literally got down to, like, I don't know, negative two, negative four, something like that for consecutive days. So everything froze, including most of the moving water around here. And that's kind of where I'm going at with my question is, is what do you do coming out of that? Because we're really just the first week broke up. And uh, this is not something that regionally we have happened very often. And I'm trying to figure out what's going to be happening with the fish moving around and where they're going to stage up. It's supposed to be warm moving into like next week, but I, I don't know. It's, it's kind of one of those, we're going to have a rainstorm or two, we're going to have a couple cold nights, so water temperature rise, is it really going to move that drastically, or are we going to bounce all over the place? I'm, I'm really struggling to figure, figure out where fish are going to be. I think they're going to be suspended. I hate to say that. You know, over the past 
couple of years, I've realized first thing I ice out, you either go really, really shallow or you go over the middle of your, your lake and look for suspended fish around bait. Um, so and so chasing main lake bait all over all day long, that's going to be terrible for my co-angler. I can guarantee that. They're not going <laughs> to like you very much. All day long and he is going to, yeah, he is going to go, what are you looking at? This is, you yeah. can get off. That's, you that guys was, have brush piles in Oklahoma, right? Is that were, they were going to stay suspended. Say again? You guys, have, you guys have brush piles. Like at the end of long points, you guys have man-made cover off of these long points and stuff, right? Oh, yeah. And the lake we're going to is the, the classic is on this lake in okay. what, a couple months. So I'll, uh, I'll give you a fishing report on how the classic is going to look if I can catch any. Because it's yeah. been that hard, and I've been chasing, and and uh, it for up here, it's usually pretty easy this time of year to find fish because you're kind of getting that free spawn motion because they start to want to warm up about February. We'll have a couple cold snaps, which will shock them usually, and they'll suspend out. But I've never had it where it was sustained cold this long, and then finally starting to warm up but it is gradual at best <laughs> you know what i mean We're, we went from you know highs in the you know single digits to now we're finally in highs of the 40s 50s and then we're going to hit like 70 this week so i don't even know what they're going to do <laughs> i'm trying to figure all that out they're going to be confused. Uh, i followed the flw tour i worked with bradley hallman uh i don't know 2019 the year that i worked for, with monster bass so i traveled around they went to grand lake and the big thing there was warming rising water in mid-february and so like they were up throwing a spinnerbait in the trees or throwing a big colorado blade around docks and um you know skipping a small jig living rubber jig around docks with the speed craw on the back but Right now, I just have a feeling those fish are going to be suspended on brush piles at the end of docks, on brush off the end of long points, or in the middle of the lake just chasing bait, like basically in the drains, like at the end of the drain where it meets the main lake. Those fish are just going to be hanging out there, not really doing a whole lot of anything. It's weird because here, if, if we got... If we got frozen water and you had melt off and rain coming in, like I'm going to be dirt, dirt shallow. I'm going to be in the back of everything, fishing warming water that's flowing in. But I just don't think your fish are going to do that. Yeah, and see, Grand, there really is no dirt shallow <clears throat> available where I'm planning to go. I mean, I guess yeah. I could run the whole Elk River, but it's just for this time of year – doing a 40 or 50 mile run is not really what I'm planning on doing. No, I don't even think it's I don't know. I was, I, yeah, I, I don't know. It was just, I'm, I'm kind of stumped by it because I was up there today and, and I caught one keeper and a bunch of short and it was like trying to find anything big was almost impossible and trying to find anything that was not a spot, you know, setting out on the point was also impossible. You know what I mean? Everything was a spotted bass all day long. Is it all blown out too? Like if you're pr pretty far up north, is it pretty blown out or are you fishing down by the dam area? Oh, I was up, uh, up, uh, towards Honey Creek, which is right around the corner. And I mean, it's, I don't know, maybe maybe 10 or 12 mile an hour winds. It was pretty light all day long. We had a couple times that you know, my spot lock had to grind a few times to catch up, but you know, it was it was pretty much dead calm with a few guys. That was probably also the problem, but just Can I ask, it, what, where were you catching the smaller there. fish? I think it's a fun thing to key on. What did you use? Where were the small fish? You said you caught some ones that weren't keepers. Where did you catch those and what were you using? The keeper I caught was actually off a bridge on a on a jerk bait, um, some rip wrap around it, you know, and I kind of key in on those type of locations again because it warms up a little quicker, like he was talking about. Uh, those rocks, you know, on a really hot day, really will gain temperature around them and hold temperature. And so there was some bait around the bridge, um, and I caught two dozen 
wipers. You know what I mean? They were that was what was loaded underneath that bridge, and and one keeper bass, uh, and then uh, you know the 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 smaller bass were on the edges of the docks. You know, flipping a jig. Um, I threw a wake bait for a second just to kind of see if anything was coming up higher. Or not a wake bait, a, a, a glide bait. And, uh, you know, just slow twitch that around docks. And I had a lot of chasers, a lot of movers, but it was just one of those days where they would kind of ink out on you and you just, they just, I couldn't really make that adjustment. Yeah, I was going to ask, like, this is, this is, yeah, something to consider. I think it's fun to think of, like, what the smaller, younger fish that haven't lived five, ten years, what they're doing, and they're quickly coming up in the shallows, and that's a lot of times with just the easier fish to catch. And then the smarter fish that's right. lived for those five to ten years, because you want that five-pounder, everyone's looking for that in the tournament, they're probably just a little bit more hesitant, and they're maybe just a tiny bit deeper and a little bit a little bit harder to commit. So it's fun. You're using, I love the glide bait to see if you're getting followers, but that glide bait, and they're kind of just suspect. They're not really feeling feeding up that big glide baits work in Northern California where I live. It's like king of glide baits to use that bait. If you're going to go something that big and then almost fish it dead stick style to put a glide bait in front of those bigger fish, maybe a little bit deeper and barely twitch it, barely reel it, barely move it. Sometimes that, in, that gets the bigger fish that are just a little bit smarter to make that connection and take the bait. So you're, you're on the brink of finding them. I mean, it sounds like you found the one and that was right in the right spot. That sun is heating up those rocks and that's going to change that temperature so well. And those big fish, you're going to move in there because that's where the feed, you know, the, the food's going to be there. The smaller fish are going to move in there as well. So I think you're, you're doing all the right things. And right. I think Ben right on it. Don't be afraid. Like he said, is like maybe move to something that's a little flashy, a little movement. The jerk bait is what I would have been throwing. <laughs> and so I, you know, I wouldn't, I, try that and what, like, as far as your electronics where are you seeing any bigger fish anywhere like using forward facing when you're turning and looking at a bait ball do you see big fish underneath them so that's what's making me stop is i'll you know i'll scan a, a bait ball that's mm -hmm. a decent size because this time of year I'll, you, i don't know what it is about grand but you can find that honey bait ball that is just all gizzard shad sometimes and so you, I'm looking at the bait size, too, when I'm scanning um, yeah. and trying to find just that bigger profile that something might be feeding on in there. And so if I see, you know, a big bait ball, a big bait ball, and then I see one that's got it's a bigger bait ball, but it's, it's more of a bigger profile bait, I always stop and kind of throw at it and see what's underneath it. Um Smart. And today it was one of those where you would do that and then you would see something come up four or five feet, you know, almost the strike range where you're like, eat it, please. You didn't eat it, it watch turn. it, yeah. You know, it was just, and, you're, and you're, you're watching it on your forward face and you're like, what am I? And I know I, I'm like, I'll speed it up, I'll slow it down, I'll change color slightly. But I'm like, I don't know what to do, guys. Like, it literally, it had me scratching my head so hard because watching the fish react to your bait and you're going i i know you see something you like mm -hmm. to a degree or you wouldn't have reacted the way and, and chased for a, a second or two you know it's not like you're having them follow eight feet they're following it 30 feet they're just not eating it the entire way yeah i'm a big fan it was that go ahead i'm sorry no, I want to hear Ben. I want to hear your take on that. When he's he's having a fish come from like thirty feet, what do you start changing on your presentation? Because I'm a big I'm a big fan of like okay maybe color, but I always always start with changing the size. If I can call a fish a long way and you're, you're new, it's cool. A forward facing, you watch them come from thirty feet, and they get there and they don't commit, and you got these big gizzard shad not always matching that gizzard shed is for me the answer of like okay i'm gonna go bigger but maybe i'm gonna go way smaller what do you change to try to entice that bite once you're getting their attention cadence is my biggest thing that i'll change so like i'll play with color a little bit but when i get a bait that they'll actually move on like if they're following that bait they're curious enough about it i think cadence is a big thing so i fish a jerk bait a lot around forward facing bait or fish um and I'll sink a jerk bait. So my favorite one is a Jackal Rerange MR. And the reason for that, I'll fish that big, big size jerk bait. But 
you can sync it and then you can change the cadence really easily. So a couple springs ago, we faced something pretty similar to what you're talking about. We had warming weather, the water was setting up, these fish started pushing like pre-spawn off the end of points, like getting in that deeper water around the shallow. Um, and then it got really, really cold, a lot of rain. The big key was getting those fish to come up to that jerk bait and then just like changing cadence and just holding it there. And instead of like a normal jerk bait retrieve, it's like a small real turn or like just something to cause that bait to inch forward. And I think, so I watch a lot of pro videos. Jason Christie just did a video about fishing rogue, a suspending rogue. And I'll take that big five and a half inch rogue, just like I'm talking about with that real turn hand or real handle turn, that rogue just kind of like dies <clears throat> forward. It doesn't, or it doesn't do anything like, you don't have to fish a rogue to get that action. Just use a different cadence. And, and sometimes it's just like turn the reel handle to get that bait to like inch forward. And those fish will just kind of come up behind it and mm. lazily like get it. Yeah, and I, I will second that well, as I, I was like mentioning. When, maybe, yeah, well, go ahead. Sorry, I'm, I'm just trying to make sure I'm, I'm understanding what you're saying. So when you say just a real handle you're almost like you're kind of chopping a, a glide bait just like a little exactly. you feel it engage and you let it go yep so, so you're, like you're when you started mentioning i was going to say is when you talked about the fish were following that glide bait that's what i keyed into to try to give you the idea is if you're doing a quarter chop half chop and then I said dead stick in a glide bait. It's not what a lot of people do. We, we had, we're talking about UFO baits and he shares a lot of the stuff he does. The difference between a glide bait and you're talking about perfect retrieve of a real retrieve, it moves the bait forward always. And there's no slack presented. A twitch of the rod with a glide bait, something completely different where you twitch it, but all the line, the distance of the line hasn't changed and allows that glide bait to do something else. Also vertically lifting a glide bait with the rod tip up changes what that glide bait's doing in front of the fish. So you have this fish that's following this glide bait and then you change its nose. It's like that fish, it sees it. You got these fish round eyes. It has to do something to that glide bait. So you're spot on, Ben, given the idea of changing it. And that's that whole presentation. You've got their attention. Now you have to do something that triggers their instinct. And it's, it allows that fish to say, oh my gosh, I have to eat this thing now that I was interested because it's that archaic belief of a fish. It, it has to feed on something that's dying. So your, your cadence change is super important. That's awesome. I, I don't know. I guess I'm trying to figure out that honey cadence for this weird pattern that's never existed around here. So yeah, uh, I don't know. This is, this is definitely a head scratcher for me. And, uh, and you guys are, you know, asking questions like this. Sometimes, you know, you, you have a guy that says something like you just said. I didn't even think about, uh, I dead stick a lot, but I didn't think about changing the rod tip angle necessarily and maybe working it rod tip up. So the other cool thing was, is and, just talking through it with you, right? Like, we're starting to get different perspectives on the same sort of thing. Like when you mentioned this, I can like think of these other situations where I, I struggle with it. Like even I'm sure as you're doing right now, like you're thinking of, okay, when those fish were following, like how can I relate what they're saying to what they were doing? So I like it, man. It, yeah. Awesome. I mean, it's definitely one of those where I always want to be a student when I'm fishing, you know, you can, you can go out there and you can learn so much even from a day where you catch one keeper and and it's got me scratching my head and i'm going man i need somebody to bounce this off so when they started saying hey what's your fishing question i'm like oh man i'm i'm sitting here loaded gun ready to go so excited for this because i don't know sometimes you just sit there and you tear your brain apart trying to figure it out on the water and so i i literally have all 14 rods on my deck and uh, every bait box strewn everywhere you know what i mean it was one of those days oh. you just started off and kept going and uh but you you try to figure out little things here and there and and i have something to build on so i mean i've, that, I've got a few days before i need to actually fish fish this tournament so we uh you know what i mean it's getting that that little small piece to build on and then having somebody like you guys to bounce us off of this is almost like a, a game changer i'm hoping <laughs> you hey get on your boat get out there facetime fishing live with ben he's gonna guide you through <laughs> 
you got that one keeper if you're using a jerk bait it might have been right when the bait was at its full suspend retrieve and it started to change up ben will talk you through what the success piece was key into it you're gonna you're gonna fill a limit you're gonna be doing good so congrats man get yeah, after I it appreciate you calling yeah. in, man i i really hope you do well thanks ben i appreciate it oh no i appreciate it guys all right man before you go we gotta spin no, that wheel no more wheel yeah no more wheel yeah, yeah. <laughs> I hate this wheel. We got to spin that wheel, and then we got to get back to T-Rex. Oh, my God. It's another hoodie. What, hoodie? <laughs> what is going on? All right. You know what to do. Email us at marketingmonsterbash.com. Name and address, and hoodie size will hook you up. Yeah, and congratulations on uh, hitting the uh, the seven-pound club, Matt. Yeah, yeah. Nice work on your PB. I'm excited about that. I'm ready for that to come in and put that on my truck. So nice. I'll yeah. Woohoo. <laughs> Celebratory whippets. All right, we gotta we gotta get the T Rex. Later, guys. All right, man. See ya. You know what we gotta do? Yeah. Once someone gets it, we gotta wipe it off and then yeah, we don't get yeah. it again. That, yeah, that's it. Oh, I like new that. Up, yeah. new up. We just learned that. Except yeah, for the off. pool. Except for the pool. <laughs> oh, I hate this wheel. All right, let's get T Rex. Trying. Let's We're a little behind schedule here. Is that better? Is that oh, better? Yeah. Is that better? That better? What's yeah, up, it's T- better. Yeah. What's up, T Rex? It's gotta be. The, oh, I guess it's gotta be the weather. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, not much, man. Uh, what I was gonna say earlier is uh, Ben's worth the wait because when I first got on YouTube, I typed in because I said, you know, what do you want to research? I put fishing, and the very first video I ever watched on YouTube was Ben. It was the Chickamauga Giant. I think that's what it was called. That's crazy. That's Isn't crazy. that amazing, Ben? That's crazy. That that fish was wild too. So I'll tell the story real quick. So I was fishing while I was doing the FLW tour thing, and my buddy gave me a glide bait. He's like, "After you're done, just throw this glide bait for like ten casts around Dayton Boat Dock, which was like the big launch down there." Well, there was one little stick coming out of the water, and I throw this glide bait up there. It's like my first or second time glide bait fishing. Um, and I work it right past that one little stick up. And as it came by, I like see it flash. And then it was just totally gone. And I hooked this fish. I get it up on the bank. And I was wearing a GoPro with a loop, loop recording. So I like, don't have any of this from the moment I get it up on the shore. But I get it up on the shore. And I'm like, holy smokes, it's a seven pounder. And there's guys across at the weigh-in stage. And I'm like, oh, my God, that's huge. So I come over in a golf cart. We ended up getting to weigh it on the FLW tour stage, and it was awesome. It was a nine nine pound five ounce fish on on Chickamauga. So wild, that's awesome. but yeah, that's T Rex. That is so cool. Thank you, man. Oh man, I've been a I've been a follower ever since. I watch all your stuff. You know that. Yes, thank you. That's so cool. That makes me happy. I appreciate it. Amazing. Uh, no problem. That's probably one of the reasons I found monster bass is because I started watching your videos and started watching some other ones. And then I seen monster bass pop up on the side and that's how I found the monster bass site. And I've been a subscriber of monster bass ever since. Thanks T-Rex. <laughs> Had to Heartbreaker. deal with Rick. Yep. That's good times. So I really don't have anything. Uh, I will tell Chris that, you know, I, I, took you up on what you told me about fishing everything in a box. I fished everything in a January box except for the Hellraiser because it's just a yeah, long time of year for that. Long, long time, yeah. No, how'd you do? Everything. Nice. I've been doing good with it, actually, but then Monday, I took the boat out and went up to Pine Flat and I said, okay, I had the boat, the box from the month before in the boat, and I was like, you know what, I'll pull something out of there. I pulled out the flat line. I fished it for about three hours hit four bass. The That's biggest one was probably just shy of four pounds. That's good. Man, but that can't catch, catch it. That's my everything on the flat line. That's, <laughs> that's future giant, baby. That's, that fish is committed. So that's awesome. Yeah, good Good on you for taking the challenge, that opportunity to become a better angler, more diversified. That's what the box is about. I'm a big advocate of that. I, I took the box challenge the other day. I went out and I was like, I'm just going to make a quick video for Instagram. I'm going to use the Ned rig. You can always catch fish in a Ned rig. And I was force feeding, force feeding. And my buddy was in the shallows and I caught nothing. I switched to a jig and I caught like three fish that were... Mm-hmm. All around four pounds. I was so mad. I'm like, I can't even catch a fish on a Ned rig. It's terrible. 
<laughs> so, you know, hey, good for you for doing, uh, taking the challenge and getting after it. All right, well, I'll let you go because I know you guys are running a little bit late. Hold uh, on, T Rex. Oh, no. <laughs> I mean, this is so exciting. It's got to land on something on, good Fox. at this point, other than going in. Oh, pie to the no. face. All right. And everyone has already taken no, a no. poll. No, 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 no. It's I, That's not how this show works, and it's my show. Everyone has already taken a poll. T Rex gets to pick, He's he's the guy. Well, if I got to pick, then I got to go with somebody that never gets any any uh, camera time since Robbie already got picked once a day. Let's go with oh, Pick. Oh, oh, thank you, T-Rex. Oh. Hold on. Let me get you some more. I will never hang up on you again. Yeah, give him a lot more. <laughs> All right. Here, uh, why don't you go sit over there with on, on Robbie's camera? Now, I don't want him near me. <laughs> well, he can't come over here. Uh, you want it full screen or no? Uh, no, no, we all want to watch it. Yeah, we want to see this. Here, take it over there and pie to the face, my friend. Your it's face. Good, interta- right, good entertainment. I'm so excited. Is, yeah, so good. Still attached. Why doesn't Rafi get to put the pie in? Yeah, Rafi does Rafi... get to put the pie. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. I thought you said you're, he was going to do it to himself. <laughs> oh, poor oh, beard. God, I love this. <laughs> Thank you, oh, T Rex. Oh, I feel so good. <laughs> That's perfect. Uh, that's amazing. All right, that's so good. Give 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 him your towel. This show is taking a turn. Give him your so towel. Good. All right. All right. Thanks for calling in, T Rex. You really, you really got to show up on time to get context here. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Who's next? We got to power through these last calls. All right. Really quick. Okay. No, no more calls. Or I mean, no more after. The, okay. After the All last. right. We got two more, and then we're done. Okay. Great. Two minutes a person. All right. Go, Go. ahead, caller. Yeah. What's happening? What up? Why don't you? It's your hype man trying to get everybody to hit that smash like button. Oh. What's going on, man? All right. I got to, oh, man, just, uh, you know, living the dream. Love it. As always. Now, I know you, you're living it on time, so I wanted to ask Ben, uh, how do, and I'll put it in the chat, but how do uh, small mouth react to larger baits? You know, down here in the south, I, I live on the other side of Tennessee where we don't have a lot of smallmouth. But, um, you know, to the larger baits in cold weather, like I've been killing, you know, running a six inch saw swim bait on the bottom, you know, they'll come and smash it with the large mouth. But do, sw- do smallmouth do that the same way? Or are they just more looking for, uh, yeah, in, in the cold water, I mean. Yeah, a lot of these fish are gonna suspend and get up around current. So, like one of the big, one of the big bites that'll happen over the next couple of weeks um, down in Tennessee is that tail race bite. If you watch Alex Rudd, they go do it. Alex and Caleb, they'll go fish the tail races around really heavy current areas, and they'll throw five and a half inch soft body swim baits. But a lot of those fish are feeding up, so you're looking for like some sort of current break, and then you swim that swim bait, and it's huge, like. Pickwick, it happens a lot, a lot on Pickwick. Any of these lakes where you have these really major dams, these fish will get behind that heavy current, and you could throw big baits, big swim baits, big um, glides are a little bit harder because there's the current is moving so fast. But if you get around any sort of slack water, they'll they'll feed up on a glide too. Well, I'm hoping to be at Pickwick on the 17th of well next month, February. But I'm not getting near the tail races. I'll be in a kayak. So, <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't be near the tail exactly races. Sometimes, no, no, because those tail races, even in a the boat, they move like two and a half to three miles an hour, and then you fish down the tail race, you get back, you motor back up, and you do it again. But what yeah, I would look for, for sure. when you're down yeah, there. Just uh, look for those current seams and current breaks. Like those fish will be basically where the seam starts. They'll be right there on that seam. 
and you can do yeah. that even. In, so, oh, yeah. and then the, the second thing, speaking of that, you know, going to like Pickwick since you obviously been there, uh, you know, how do you, how much prep, or does your prep decide where you're going to launch from? You know, the kayak we can launch from anywhere, so it's even, you know, it's even harder for us because we're not traveling as much distance, you know, as a boat. Um, you know, how do you pinpoint? I'm going to launch from here because of X. Uh, a lot of it's going to be research. When I fished Pickwick, I fished a lot of. I think it's. Indian and Bear Creek. There's a launch right across from those two creeks. Um, and then there's a launch right by not just trace bridge, I believe. Like I just pick a, like a high percentage yeah. area where I know a lot of tournaments will be won this time of year. And a lot of it just comes down to research. I think most of the guys are probably most of the people are going to be fishing down by the dam though. Launch right at McFarlane. You want me to call Jacob right. Wheeler and ask him? I mean, you can do it. I'll... All right. Uh-oh. We're, we're going to run out of time. I'm going to do that next time. I but think we uh, lost him. Oh, did we really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We lost him. Oh, I wanted to spin the wheel. All right. We got one more caller, and we got to call it a day. Who is it? Well, I'll let him introduce himself. Go ahead, caller. You are on the air. Hi. Right. Hello, guys. This oh. is I am going to close out the show today. Officially, you know, we got our man Dan back on the show. It's been a while since we talked to him, but let's go ahead and take care of the housekeeping first. We are definitely going to talk about the Apple Card, the Metal Card, backed by Goldman Sachs. Use your Apple Card to quick link that email to tell you or a text to get that special VIP discount. Use your Apple Card. Save yourself some extra money with the tax back. What? Is this a recording? Is this a person? <laughs> he's, he's been huffing too much. Way Why don't you just tell drag. me the movie you want to see? Wow. Yeah. That's just pretty good. Here we go, guys. Now, guys, you know we got Ben on. The last time we talked to Ben, I wanted to go give those guys a whoop ass who did damage to his vehicle. And I told him he had to get the AAA plus with RV because all he has to do is make that freaking phone call and they come and get your boat, they get you, they get your truck. And they towed you back up to 200 freaking miles to wherever you're going. And that's the beautiful thing about AAA. I remember this. The last time I was on, oh, yeah. my tires oh, yeah. had just gotten slashed. Oh, that's right. I didn't get AAA, though. I didn't get AAA. Why? But I did get, because I you did promised get him AAA. <laughs> no, no. He's got to sign up for it, though. <laughs> I can't buy somebody AAA. He's got to sign up for it and send us the bill. Triple A for everybody. Oh, no. no. I did get towing. I did get uh, trailer towing in case that ever happens. And they'll just come grab my trailer, put it on a on a flatbed, and take me home. Did Rudd ever tell you why he did it? Yeah, he said that I was catching more bigger fish well, than him, I mean. and so he just got jealous. Yeah, that, that tracks. Yeah. That, 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 that's great, but, man, I'm telling you, man, I want you to be saved anytime. I'll tell you it happened to me just a couple weeks. I'm in mean, Dollar Brea. Don't know what happened. Looked up, saw some cars go through the road with emergency flashes on. Boom, my tire hit something. Hey, Felt like somebody shot my tire. It. it was something in the road. Camp Boom. It. Big hole in my tire. I drove camp like another it. mile, pulled to the side. They went all hey, the play. They came and changed my tire. <laughs> Dang, Bob crazy. Barker, Bob Barker <laughs> needs to spin the wheel, I think, Gambit. You're about to get a prize. All right, you ready? <laughs> all right, go give me a prize. I'm ready. I'm ready. <laughs> Show, showcase <laughs> showdown. On that one. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna make. We you won. So, you won. You won a three pack of combat wipes. <laughs> oh God! <laughs> All right. Well, congratulations. Really? Thanks for calling in. <laughs> All right, my man. You guys take care. Much love. <laughs> All right. All right. Thanks, Thank Gambit. All right, so All right. Ben, Ben, tell us, are you going to put oh, everyone sorry, on the screen? I, I might have to spin the wheel. And jump <laughs> the All right, Ben, so for everyone that's still here, please tell us again uh, if, if <laughs> do we lose him? Yeah, but we lost Gambit. Oh, okay. No, no, no. You, okay. 
Uh, the phone ben, lines are ben, tell, ben, tell us again. If someone's in, interested in, in, in breaking down a new lake with you or just learning something, they fill out the form that we've pinned in the chat, or they can hit up your website, which is? The uh, website is brnowakfishing, B-R-N-O-W-A-K fishing at gmail, or at, no, just dot com, just dot yeah. com. Brnowak. Now you fishing. got me doing it. <laughs> <laughs> It's so funny. BRNOACFishing.com. I got yeah. you. I'm yeah. on there. Yep. Thank you. Yeah, that's cool. Thank you. All right. Listen, we're going to let you go because we know you got little ones. Thanks so much for uh, taking the time to be with us today. And yeah, uh, I hope this is really successful. And, uh, you know, once once you take somebody out and uh, you've got a video, we'd love to share it with everyone so that they can see kind of like, you know, what they're going to get and, and, uh, and how to contact you. So. I appreciate it. Uh, thanks for having me on. I'll definitely, you know, put together some videos of, of working with some people and hopefully have some really cool stuff to share with people. But thanks for having yeah, ben, me. On. Hey, hey, Ben, if you ever want to test dummy to do some filming, you want to do a video, I'll call in and it can be any lake here in California. You said you want to come to California. I'll go to a lake and you can you yes. and I can fish and I'll do exactly what you tell me to do. It'd be kind of fun. So let's, that would be let's actually really happen. sweet. Let's Let's do that for sure. I love that yeah. idea. I love that. I'll, idea. I'll I'll be I'll be your feet on the ground here in California. You'll get to experience California fishing, and we'll fish it how you want to fish. It'll be kind of cool. <laughs> that would be sweet. All right, before you go, Ben. Oh no. <laughs> okay, yeah, spill this thing. Oh my god! I thought you erased it. <laughs> cool. Ah, it's Someone dark jumps now. In. Let's go. Someone jumps in the pool, <laughs> or you can spin again. Oh, man, I mean, <laughs> we'll just spin it again. Oh. We'll just spin it again. It's too dark. I wouldn't even be able it to see you jump dark. in. Right? Oh, that was that was the hoodie. I erased that one. It's rigged. Monster bass bait pack. Oh, give it to uh, you know who I've seen in the comments a lot tonight. Oh. Daniel Pierce has been over in the comments, okay. blowing it up over there. All right. Daniel Pierce, cool. email us at marketingmonsterbass.com, name and address, and we'll hook you up. Let's just send him a whipped cream pie. Okay. <laughs> that would be funny. All right, <laughs> Ben, listen, we'll let you go. Thanks a lot for tuning in. Really appreciate it, and uh, we'll talk with you soon. Thanks. See you guys. All right. Bye. Later, Ben. All right. You know, that would be a good thing maybe we'd consider doing, like, with Rafi, too. Like, Rafi's going fishing. Have him break it down. Yep. He takes us out, and we see if we can put Ben to the test. Yeah, it's great. I could be on the water with uh, T-Rex so he could tie all my my knots and everything. Otherwise, I just would, I'd be useless. Yeah, but don't you want to learn how to tie the knots? Well, yeah, maybe a little. Maybe. All right. So um, I just want to take a minute before we end the show. Um you know, there's a couple new things. I sent you out an email today. If you haven't seen the latest video, uh, we made a change to shipping. We're going to start shipping FedEx and making real-time rates available. So if you need something overnight, you want your box overnighted or you want uh, a pole or whatever, we're going to make those rates available for you. Uh, it is going to cause a delay in the, uh, in the shipping of the February boxes. We're not going to bill you until the 6th of the month. So if you normally get billed the 1st through the 5th, you're going to get billed just in February on the 6th. And then we're going to start shipping the very next day. And then in March, we'll go back to the first and everything will be just back to normal. But just upgrading shipping, making sure that uh, you guys get your packages as fast and reliably as possible. You know, once I hand it off to, the, to these uh, shipping companies, it's kind of out of my hands. But I realize that I do have a choice and I might as well pick the one that you guys have told me is the one you think is the best. So we're going to go with that and uh, hope that, uh, you know, that speeds things up. And we got a great show for you next week, Chris. Uh, why don't you uh, Why don't you share with uh, those still here? You know who our guest is next week. Yeah, no, super excited. Aquatic biologist. He has now YouTube, but he's all over Instagram, and he he helps just dismiss the myths of bass fishing in relation to what fish eat, how fast they can grow, what goes on. Shanna Shan is incredible. He's he actually has a degree in fish. And so we get to talk to him. Mm. Great following, super informative, can speak a standard language, not just as a scientist, but things that we can all just all disseminate and make sense of it. So he's going to help us catch fish by understanding fish. Can't wait for next week. It's going to be a lot of fun. 
Love it. Love it. Well, we went a little late today, so thank you guys for uh, for your patience, and uh, uh, we'll see you next week. Uh, also, yeah. congratulations to E.G. Schreib winning the chat. Um, just, you know, reminding us why that things are a lot more expensive unnecessarily in uh, in California, saying, yeah, that's like 12 bucks of whipped cream in Cali. Uh, E.G., email us at marketing at monsterbass.com. Congratulations on winning the chat. Oh, wait. We're also getting lots of questions about the Rafi socks. How can they get these things? So what you, we need to discuss. I just made the first sample, so we got to figure this out. We'll talk after the All show. Right. Then we'll release them. We'll get them on Monster well, Bass website. We'll make it happen. We'll let you know next week. Yep. All right, guys. Thanks a lot.